and welcome to a newly physically fit episode <laughs> of We Only Look Thin. I am your recently fit host, Catherine ah. Weigel, and with me today, as always, is... Donald Weigel, also recently fit, uh, very, very recently. <laughs> um, spent most of my life being incredibly unfit. Oh my uh, gosh. You know what I think the problem was? The physical fitness, presidential fitness award thing. Do you remember? Wait, okay, that that, didn't turn out well. That really had something to do with it. The president's physical fitness test, uh, which is, I don't know if they still do this in schools. They do. They do do it. When we were growing up, uh, well, they do. I just, I've just now learned that they (laughs) do. Sources close to me say. (laughs) Sources very close to me on this actual couch uh, tell me that they still do it, but um, you know, a series of uh, trials, um, sort of like a Hunger Games thing, but with Hunger other Games for kids sure. There laughing. Were, at there was you. like one where you had to walk on hot coals, and another one where you had to like do a tightrope over a pool full of sharks, like that kind of thing. But really, you know, it was it was more like doing Man, New Jersey yeah. fitness. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like that in California. You had to do sit ups, and you had to do shuttle run, and you had to do oh like gosh. a fifty yard hanging dash. from a oh, bar. Oh yeah, hanging from a bar and pull ups. Ask, and... ask me how many times I hung from. How many a bar? times did you hang N- from a none? Normally, you don't let me finish. So no. I was expecting you to cut me off, but... The shame oh, well. that I felt yeah. from not being physically fit and being laughed at by my fellow uh, students was enough to keep me from fitness forever and ever and ever, and it brought me shame. And yeah. uh, isn't this fun? This is a fun topic, but we're Super here to fun. say something. We went from couch to Zumba in this podcast, didn't we, Donald? Yes, we did. This this We're going to cover everything from A to Zumba. Uh-huh. Yeah. You don't even know what I'm talking about yet. Um, so we last week's episode, we talked about uh, facing your fears and how uh, living your life in fear of getting fit or, or fear of the fitness process, um, how that is no way to live and, you know, facing it. A lot of people, and especially women from what I've read, are afraid of going to a gym or joining a fitness class for fear of judgment. And so, friend of the show, uh, friend of the show, Stephanie uh, is a Zumba instructor who used to be a couch sitter, and um, so we are going to interview her, uh, bring her onto the show, and hopefully, you know, hearing her story will help to others to overcome their fears and insecurities about doing uh, something along those lines. Because at this point in your life, you might just be thinking, "This is just Catherine and Donald. What do they know? Guess what?" (laughs) <laughs> Somebody else knows something also. Other Some, people know things, it turns out. No, but I mean, we can give our perspective over and over again and heartfelt anecdotes about physical fitness tests. But uh, Stephanie went from really being inactive to being in a position where she found an activity she loved. And we talk about that all the time. Yeah. Finding something that you love, this isn't punishment. And it might take time to find what you love. Maybe it's Zumba, maybe it's not Zumba. Yeah, if, you, if you're one of those people like me who thought, that the exercise experience had to be 100% painful, and so you just avoided it like the plague. Um, or like the Cobra Kai Dojo. <laughs> or like the Cobra Kai Dojo, exactly. Um, you know, I found walking and rebounding, and now I do some strength training videos and, and that sort of thing that I actually enjoy, and it has led to a much better better fitness level in me and a a much better quality of life and you know for uh spoiler alert for stephanie her um her love turned out to be zumba so there could be other things out there that maybe you don't even know that you enjoy and uh we think listening to stephanie's story will uh will help maybe inspire somebody out there to find it yeah, so with uh, very little additional ado, there's yeah. going to be a little more ado. Yeah, yeah we won't say much without ado. further ado, but no. there'll be some ado. So so many people say no further ado. There's a little more ado, <laughs> if we're being more. honest. Yeah. And here Th- we go. <laughs> this, this, in fact, could count as ado. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone just have a do? I don't know. I've got a little more ado. And With then, a lot uh, more ado. <laughs> this is turning into considerably more ado. <laughs> if you're still listening, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, but uh, but yeah, here we go with an interview with uh, the talented and inspiring Stephanie. Enjoy. So we have a very special guest with us today, Stephanie, who is a Zumba instructor, but it turns out she has a bigger 
story than just being a Zumba instructor. We uh, often imagine uh, physical fitness uh, enthusiasts just come out of the package that way. They're just born perfect and wonderful. And uh, so we're going to uh, hear from Stephanie and hear about her journey from the couch to Zumba instructor. Hello, Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Um, And as Catherine said, uh, you know, I... I sort of imagine uh, Zumba instructors or just fitness instructors in general that they were they were born knowing exactly what to do and that they just came out of the womb with having all of the the moves down and uh, the leg warmers, the being, headbands, exactly, everything. <laughs> being physically fit from uh, from a very young age, and uh, I'm assuming that's the case with you. Absolutely. You know, I came out dancing. <laughs> Um, You know, I probably always assumed that too. Um, But I like to tell people now, no one came out doing anything. No one was born a basketball star. No one was born a marathon runner. No one was born a Zumba instructor. We all had a day one. We all set foot somewhere for the first time and then ran with that. Well, and I think it's that is an amazing message because I think for me, watching Jane Fonda videos as a kid, I just assumed that she was born perfect. Uh, maybe she is. If you know Jane Fonda, let us know. Uh, <laughs> but but I think we have this impression of you know we pass a gym or we pass a hit class or uh, you know a yoga class, and we just think that everyone in there was born to be there. I I love that we all had a day one. I've just written it down, and I'm going to steal it and take credit for it in the future. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about your experience with um, health and fitness as a kid? Were you always active uh, or were you picked last on every team like me? Oh, was I picked last? Um, I can remember in high school, we would have to run laps. I never oh, yeah. ran a lap. <laughs> I was always Same. getting yelled at by the PE teacher who was also yeah. like the sports coach. So I think I infuriated him. Um, I did take dance classes as a younger child and I loved that. But Once I got to where, you know, that kind of faded away and I was more focused on school, I never got back into it and I never knew how to get back into it. And I can specifically remember when Zumba first became a thing and I first started seeing signs around town thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I think I would so enjoy that, but there's no way I'm going to actually go do that. Um, I was like, I'm out of shape. I'm too fat. I can't do that. I can't keep up. And for years, I wanted to try it and never even tried it. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I read a study uh, about a study, uh, the This Girl Can campaign that talks about there's a huge gap between men and women engaging in sports and physical activity. And what do you I, I know you you touched on it, but what do you think your fears were about getting involved in a Zumba class that kept you from doing it for years? I think there were a few. One was everyone's going to look at me and judge me. One was yeah. I'm not going to be able to keep up. And what do you do if you can't keep up? <laughs> you yeah. know, do you do you leave the room and then everyone's watching you leave the room and then that's even worse? And so I think it was just a lot of fear and anxiety around those two things of, you know, physically, can I even do this? And then the mental of everyone's going to be looking at me. Everyone's going to be judging me. They're going to think something about me. So what actually got you in the door the first time from from Zumba curious to Zumba active? <laughs> like what? Because I mean, you and you and I have been talking for years. and You're probably tired of me saying it, but like. Hey, Stephanie, what kind of shoes should I have for Zumba? Hey, hey, Stephanie, what should I do? And I still have not yeah. gone. So this is a big like. Yeah, Catherine has literally been talking about doing a Zumba class for years and still has not done one. But I got so. the shoes. Yeah, I have she has the, shoes. the shoes. You're one step closer right there. <laughs> see, see, I got the shoes. So so tell us about sort of how you actually got into your first class. What gave you the confidence to do that? So I was doing a weight loss program at my gym and through that, they wanted us to try every class. And I mean, I Uh hated all of it. (laughs) I hated working out with my trainer. I hated running laps. Um, I can relate. Yeah. Didn't like any of it. And um, I met through a friend at the gym. I met another woman and we were just talking about, you know, our history. She was trying to lose weight as well. And at some point I mentioned, I used to take dance classes and I really love dancing. And she said, well, if you love dancing, you have to come to Zumba class. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. (laughs) So she told me (laughs) that she would go with me if I would go. And I highly recommend that. If you want to try something new, find a friend that you can rope into going with you. 
Oh, um, that's that a good one. That makes everything easier, I think. And you've got a shared experience and it's much easier to walk in with someone than to walk in alone. Yeah. Have, do you do you identify as an obliger in the Gretchen Rubin world? I do. I do. How did you guess? <laughs> <laughs> She's psychic. Yes. So she told me she was going to meet me there. It was a Saturday morning. I actually still know the exact date. It was a Saturday in September. She was going to meet me at 9 a.m. I never would have gone if I had not known she was meeting me there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I show up and she says, we have to be in the front so you can see the instructor's feet. And I'm like, you're oh, kidding. Boy. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. We're going to end this call now. I, don't I, like <laughs> I just, I just got a like like shot of terror through too. my body at the idea of being in the front of the class. I don't like this friend. She no, sounds very pushy. She sounds awful. So how did that advice go for you? <laughs> I mean, she was up there with me and we were to the side. So it's not like I was front and center. We were off to the side, but we were where I could see his feet. And it turned out that was pretty good advice. Um, by the fourth song and um, that instructor became my mentor. And he actually, to this day, knows what song that was. And he still plays it if I go Aww. to his class. Wow. By the fourth song, it's I was like in love. It's like some sort of romantic comedy, except involving Zumba. Zumba. It is. It's like a romantic fitness comedy. It absolutely yeah. is. Um, <laughs> we, we're going to write this. We're going to do it. <laughs> it's, it's funny. I actually like want to go through your Instagram feed and be like, is it that guy? Is it that guy? Is he inspiring? Is he inspiring? <laughs> He he is in some of my pictures, but anyway. Um, so yes. So by the fourth song, I was so in love. The hour went by, and it didn't feel like an hour. Oh, that's amazing. You know, yeah. you get on the treadmill, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, am I done yet?" Even if you're listening to music, even if you're listening to a podcast, you're still so aware of that time passing. And Zumba, the class is over, and you actually want more. Yeah. Not to make this about me, but I <laughs> I walk. I try and do forty flights of stairs every day, and. It's like the longest time of the day. Just even though I listen to like an audiobook or a podcast or something while I'm doing it, I'm just like, I'll I'll do a few flights and look at my watch and 30 seconds has gone by. <laughs> I'm like, what has happened? I could have sworn I was almost done. Yeah. Well, but I think, you know, your message is really important because we've talked about that, about finding the fitness that really suits you because we have, you know, we know people who do 5Ks or 10Ks or marathons or who do hit classes and finding the thing that actually resonates with you that doesn't feel like punishment is so huge because yeah. I spent years, like you said, working with a physical, you know, working with a trainer who I hated, running which I hated, and it always felt like a punishment. And finding the thing that actually brings you joy takes time. Did you actually try a other forms of activity? Because it sounds like they made you try other things at your gym. Like, did you find things that didn't suit you? Oh, I tried nearly everything. Um, tai Bo, yoga, like um, cardio classes where you were lifting weights, you know, as part of a group. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't necessarily hate everything, but I didn't love anything as much as Zumba. And over time, yeah. I mean, there's things you do just because, you know, it's good for you. Although I, I won't do anything that I hate. I mean, that's just, <laughs> I'm well, not going to do that. And you know, that's been one of the cornerstones, I think, of, of our philosophy, you know, throughout the entire, you know, couple of years of doing this podcast and giving advice to people is that if you do something that you hate, you may be able to, you know, grin and bear it and grit your teeth and get through it for six months or a year, even a couple of years, but eventually you're going to stop doing it if you hate doing it. And you know, Catherine and I found walking and getting steps and rebounding, and that has worked for us. But she has been interested in a Zumba class, you know, getting outside of her comfort zone. And uh, I, I think that, you know, hearing your story. So you you took the this first class and the hour went by quickly. Um, and then and then what happened? So, I mean, before I was even over, I thought to myself, this I will do again. Because everything else we were doing, we took a spinning class. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'm doing this again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Me either. So um, I became a regular in Zumba. Honestly, from that moment on, um, my favorite instructor taught two classes a week. I was there. I was there if I was sick. I loved it so much. Oh, wow. And wow. within just a few months, I found out there was going to be an instructor training. And back then, I was still really shy. I didn't really talk to people. I had a lot of social anxiety. So I... I wouldn't even talk to my favorite instructor. So I found another person who was an instructor and asked her, you know, what about this instructor training? Do you think I could do this? 
you know, and I was afraid because it's an eight hour training. I'm like, I don't know if I can do eight hours of <laughs> Yeah, eight hours, eight hours in one in one day or just total? No, it's eight hours in one day. It's a Saturday oh, or a right. Sunday, you know, all Goodness. day you're going through it and you're learning wow. a variety of rhythms and you're learning how to teach. And um, she was so encouraging. And she said, absolutely, you can do this. Um, you know, sign up for this. Stop thinking about it and just sign up. So like I went home and signed up before I could talk myself back out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. And I approached it, I wasn't necessarily ever thinking I would actually get in front of people and teach, but I'm a perfectionist and I wanted to know that every step I was doing was exactly the step. That sounds like Donald. <laughs> yes. That's exactly me. Like I, if I, I do some YouTube workout videos and I like to watch the whole video one time and just sort of practice the move before I actually yeah, he's like, do it. <laughs> he's like captain instruction manual, even with just like, how do you drink water? Here, let me watch a video on it. So yeah. he's, he's all about perfect Any, form. Anytime so. we buy a new anything, I like, I don't, I, I sit down, I pull the instructions out and I read them cover to cover. And I just press buttons anything. until yeah, something she happens. She starts trying to make things work. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely the person like once I'm into something, I'm all in. I want to know everything about it that I can learn about yeah. it. So you did the training and then did you like how how did that go? Did you survive? I, I assume you did because we're talking to you. But um... <laughs> did, No, she did didn't survive. survive. It's a twist ending. <laughs> You're speaking to me from the beyond. You just don't know it. <laughs> I did survive. Spooky. And um, it's very interesting. I often tell people like my, my Zumba career has so mirrored my entire transformation. Um, it's a big thing in like the Zumba community. We take a lot of selfies. We take a lot of pictures. And at the end of the training, there's always a line to get your selfie with the woman who trained you or the man who trained you. Ah. I don't even have that picture because I was too shy to get in line. And I mean, it's a line. Everyone's in it. It's not even like you're going up to this person and specifically asking. So I don't yeah, have a yeah, picture yeah. Um, from I have a group picture, but I don't have an individual picture from that day because I was too shy to even speak to the instructor <laughs> to do that. What do you think was, you know, it, it sounds like you still had a lot of your hangups about the whole process. What do you think was, was driving you at this point to, to do it at all? I think, like I said, just wanting to know everything I could about it to be the best, not just be the best, but to make sure I was getting the most effective workout out of it. It was more of a if I'm doing this and I love this so much and I'm doing it three times a week now, I want to do it the best that I can. Um, yeah. but during the training and um, in the Zumba community, everyone will know Loretta Bates is who trained me. She's very well known within the Zumba world. She spoke to us at length about so many things. She's an amazingly inspirational woman. But one thing she said is you don't have to be like your favorite instructor. You don't have to be like this other person. Who you are as an instructor, somewhere in the world that is needed. Ah, I like that. So that kind of settled in and I wasn't ready to start teaching, but I walked out of the training thinking maybe one day I actually will teach. So it was yeah, a while. That's great. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, it was a while from there before I actually started teaching. Um, my instructors who knew me immediately started bringing me up for songs the first time I did a song by myself in class, my mind went totally blank. I could not remember music. I had no idea what feet did. <laughs> <laughs> so can you, I know people know the word Zumba and I know looking at your Instagram feed, everybody looks like you're at a party all the time. And yes. I'm like, must be nice to be at a party all the time. And yeah. like there are whistles and yeah, there's there are... like, there's like an Xbox video game Zumba that I've, I looked at a long time ago. So I know there's that. Tell us. What is Zumba? What does Z <laughs> stand for? <laughs> Zumba is, well, the, the most basic, it's a dance fitness class with a lot of international rhythms. So it's not a hip hop class and it's not a class where you're working out to pop music. You're working out to a variety of music from around the world. So we like to say you travel around the world in one hour in our classes. Uh, we call it a workout in disguise. And it really is like a party. I mean, people, we dress in wildly colorful clothing. <laughs> we do encourage our participants to make noise and have fun, which I think is what I love so much about it. The hour passes. I, I'm quickly. imagining now it's like carnival in Brazil. <laughs> It a little bit is, but, I think. But less <laughs> topless, I think. There's yeah. more yes. sports bra yes. action. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. Yes, I strongly encourage, you know, tops and pants and appropriate <laughs> shoes in all of my classes. <laughs> yeah, Donald, 
I don't. It just got weird. It just um, did. So did you, for your, like, just going back and we want to sort of talk about, like, you've transitioned into going up on stage and maybe forgetting some moves at first. I think that is a big fear of mine is kind of looking foolish or seeming uncoordinated, which I'm pretty sure I am. I haven't tried, so I don't know yet. (laughs) But, you know, as someone who's been on both sides, being the person going to the first class and becoming, it sounds like, much more confident, what would you you know, suggest for someone like me going to your first class? Like what, what do I need to know going into my first class? Okay. So just like the basics, you want to wear comfortable workout clothes. You want to wear good shoes. You want to take a bottle of water with you, which is pretty much what you're going to do for any workout, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. In Zumba, the best shoes to wear, if it's something that you're going to do more than once Shoes that can easily turn and pivot because we do a lot of turning. We do a lot of lateral movement. So like a running shoe isn't necessarily the best shoe. But if yeah. you're just going to try a class out, whatever you've got will work. Okay. Yeah. No, the the uh, running shoes that I have are basically like platform lift shoes with very much cushion and they're not stable at all. So I did end up investing in in some shoes. We, we've talked about the shoes. So Well, yeah. I, I think I'm exceptional because I can pivot like you've never seen in running <laughs> shoes. So. I, I imagine if, if you ever tried Zumba, if you'd be I perfect. If I ever tried Zumba, I would have been excellent at it yes <laughs> so but i i think i have a fear of i think everyone is a professional when i see a hit class or a yoga class that i'm the only person who's ever been a first timer yeah like you said that you when you went to your first class were kind of at the front and over to the side do you think that that is sort of a good place to start or would you have done something differently for me that worked out really well but i do have students who come and they start in the back of the room. As long as you can see the instructor, that's the most important part. If you're in a crowded room and you can't see the instructor's feet and you don't know the steps, that can be very difficult. But if you can position yourself where you can see the feet, because that's the first part is get the feet down. Don't worry about all the arms and all the other things they're doing. Get the feet first. Everything else will follow. And I also wanted to speak to that fear we have going in of everyone's going to know I'm new everyone's going to know that I've never done this before. Everyone's going to be watching me. Everyone is worried about what they are doing. Yeah. No one cares. <laughs> what <laughs> the, They really don't. Um, everyone, especially in Zumba, it seems like they're in the music, they're in the dance moves, and they're really not aware of what anyone else is doing. They're looking at the instructor And if there's a mirror, they're looking at themselves in the mirror. And that's pretty much everyone is very just focused on their own workout. Um, As the instructor, I'm looking around to make sure you're not going to hurt yourself. And as long as you're not going to hurt yourself, whatever you're doing is also good with me. And I like to tell my students, you burn the same calories if you go to the left or the right. It really, (laughs) as as long as you're moving, we're going to be okay. And they say that it takes about five Zumba classes to really start to get the steps down. But once you have the steps, we do the same rhythms. It might be a different song, but the rhythm and the steps are going to be similar. So you'll get to the point where you hear a song and you're like, oh, I know we're going to do these kind of steps to that kind of music. Right. Do you think like, I think for me wanting to be perfect the first time. Like I actually took a Billy Blanks Tybo class with Billy Blanks. And I am really shocked that I survived because I was hyper extending <laughs> and I was like punching extra when he walked by. And like, like I was lifting totally with her back for some reason. Yeah, and there it was, was no, it yeah. was not good. Like, but every, as he walked around class, people's form improved because you wanted to act like you were like, you know, punching the world as as he was walking by like I think and and maybe it was my age but I think as I've gotten older I realize like if I can only do 20 percent of the moves if I need to modify if I need to leave after 20 minutes like can you tell me has anyone thrown rotten garbage at anyone for leaving a class early or being imperfect no. <laughs> like i just imagine <laughs> interesting cuz i just imagine everyone has bags of rotten garbage uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe i've yeah, watched yeah. too many shakespeare plays or something but i've been teaching regularly for over 4 years now i have never seen anyone i've never <laughs> seen anyone 
The only time we even notice is if someone notices you leave and we're concerned, like, are they okay? Um, yeah. That yeah. would be my only concern. And sometimes if I can get to a point where my class knows the moves, I might just peek out, make sure, you know, you didn't walk outside and pass out <laughs> because yeah. you know, that's my job as an instructor is to make sure you're safe and okay. But no, right. no one's going to give you the side eye. And I tell all of my students, and in my class, I have students from their 20s to their 80s. I have a wow. wide range of abilities and everything. So, I mean, some people are going all out and they're hitting every jump. Some people don't jump. They step it out. Some people are just kind of walking in place through that part. And yeah, that's all of it is perfectly fine. Um, and I think every Zumba instructor would tell you, go at your pace and do what you can do. And if you need to take a water break, I mean, everyone does. They walk away, they take, you know, get a little water, catch their breath, towel off, come back in. Yeah, yeah. that's that sounds that, that's very reassuring, I think, for people to hear, because we uh, we pretty recently watched the original Karate Kid with our daughter and uh, who had never seen it before. And there's a part of me that imagines these classes like going to the Cobra Kai dojo for the yeah. first time and, you know, having all of the kids like, you know, call you a, a punk from the poor side of town and kick you out. So, um, it's, so, so it's you're nice not the Cobra Kai. Yeah, it's not the Cobra Kai. Yeah. Um, and I, I was wondering, um, I don't, I know we sort of touched on it, but what was your level of fitness when you started doing Zumba the first time? And then where were you at when you finally got to the point where you were comfortable teaching? So when I first started Zumba, I had been working out for a grand total of 10 days. <laughs> wow. So um, you had a lot of experience. I was, yes, I had. Um, <laughs> and I was still at the point where I was getting nauseous during every workout. That was my fitness level. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, I had none. I had, can you have a negative fitness level? I think that's where I was. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many years of your life do you think you spent at that, that none level? Sitting on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I stopped dance when I was 12 or 13 and I started working out in 2011. So, wow. and I'm 42 now. So however many. <laughs> <laughs> decades, literally decades. I sat on the couch. There was a, there was a dent on my couch, the size of my butt. That was, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, part of the reason I bring that up is that I, I think that, you know, I was somebody who used to think that if I didn't have it together by a, you know, by a certain age, totally. that I could never get it together. And, you know, so I, I had thought, you know, once I hit 40, well, that's it. This is just going to be my fitness level for the rest of my life. Yeah. And there's nothing I can do about it. And I, I think that, you know, going from zero to Zumba instructor shows that you can do it at any age. Oh, absolutely. And I actually have a Zumba student who I don't believe she started working out until she hit 50. And she started wow. with runs doing 5Ks that and 10Ks. That is super old. <laughs> Don just turned 50. I just so turned 50. That's why I say that. So I know on your Half Size Me interview, which was episode 281, if you want to go back and listen to Stephanie on there talk about uh, her, her entire journey, but you talked about having kids being a reason to want to get fit or it was sort of your why being active. Can you talk a little bit about uh, parenthood and fitness and how that affects your kids? Yes. Um, so... I had my first child in 2009, and when he was about 18 months old, we had gone to a playground, and he climbed up, and, you know, I'm chatting with the other moms, not really noticing it was one of those playgrounds where it was kind of open, so, you know, your kid can just fall off. <laughs> <laughs> young enough to like not. the good old days. Yeah, yeah, like in the seventies when I grew up, and they didn't even have any uh, any padding underneath the bars, monkey bars and stuff. Yes. So my child takes off running. Well, I could not run. <laughs> so another parent actually caught my child when he took a flying leap off the end of the playground. Oh, <laughs> wow! And I was so distraught, and like you know, I couldn't keep my child safe because I physically couldn't move. And then I really started thinking about what kind of an example am I setting for him? You know, I'm going to want him to go out and be active while I'm sitting home on the couch eating Doritos. <laughs> that doesn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you've got to be the example. You can't, you know, it doesn't work that way. So um, I found the program that I did at the gym and I started that right before he turned two. And I can remember the first time I ran a mile in my entire life was in 2011. 
and wow. it was so hard. <laughs> but oh, I yeah. thought of him the entire way. And I just thought, imagine you're running with him. Imagine he's asked you to run with him. And that was how I got through a lot of the harder workouts was imagining that I was doing them with my son or for my son. So since then, um, I've done a half marathon and he ran across the finish line with me. He ran the last tenth of a mile with me and we crossed the finish oh, line wow. together. And we've done some fun run, like one mile distances together. And um, right now he's really active in basketball. And he actually would tell me, he's like, you're so happy when you come home from the gym. You're so happy when you come home from Zumba. So he, oh, sees wow. it. <laughs> he sees me being active. And in fact, he wants to become a Zumba instructor and he knows exactly how old he has to be. He knows when he can take the training himself. Yeah, oh, I think I've... Yeah. So I think, and he comes out with me whenever I do an event that he can be a part of. Um, he likes to come out with me and he actually, he did a song with me at an event <laughs> not that long ago. Could we pay you to hang out with our daughter? For yeah. A you sound much more inspiring than us. She, uh... Yeah. She just calls us fiddos and, and then goes back to her room and uh, hangs out on the computer. Yeah. She told us yesterday that the worst part about us getting fit was that she was like, oh no, they're going to ask me to do fitness things. Luckily she <laughs> moderates her food and we walk her to school, but she, she's not found a love of fitness yet. We're, yeah, we're yeah, working we're, on that. We're working on it. Well, you just haven't taken her to a Zumba class yet. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> maybe. And you're, we did an episode recently on the support of those around you. Has your community changed at all? Like it sounded like you were pretty introverted or shy before. How Do you feel like this experience has changed your personality? Oh, yes. And in fact, when you do that little personality assessment, I actually have changed from an introvert to an extrovert, which they say can't happen. But I'll tell you it did. Wow. <laughs> um, no, I am. It's unbelievable to me to think of the person I was 10 years ago. I was talking to some friends yesterday, which first of all, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been out with friends because I didn't really have that many. Um, yeah, and I didn't go yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> and they yeah, actually yeah, asked yeah. me, you know, if I were asked to do a podcast 10 years ago, and I'm like, well, I wouldn't even have responded to the person. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't even have said no. I just would have ignored it. And, yeah. you know, I wouldn't have even thought I had anything to say. Um if you listen to my Half Size Me podcast, you'll know I, I used to hate myself a lot. And um, I never thought well of myself or highly of myself. And I didn't think I was worthy of having good people around me because who was I? So now that I see my self-worth and I love myself and I put that out into the world, I have so many amazing people in my community um, that it really kind of blows me away. The community I've created and the friendships that I've made and the connections I've made. Yeah. Well, I know, you know, on the non-scale victory side, I remember you posted a while ago about going on a, like a citywide scavenger hunt with a bunch of friends. Yes. And how that, like, it's the same thing. It's like, it has nothing to do with the scale, but it has everything to do with mindset and just your ability to put yourself out there and try new things. And it was, it was just so wonderful to see, because I remember listening to that half size me interview and, and resonating so much with that, having a damaging uh, early relationship, you know, being kind of out of place and depressed and being able to transition from that because like 10 years ago too, I felt put upon and lost and like everybody else had it better than me. And I would take those personality tests and think that positive people were born that way or faking it, or maybe they weren't deep enough because misery was great, I guess. But seeing your transition from that introverted person and that shy person to this outgoing person and just seeing it in the photos that you post and the things that you share has really been an inspiration for me. And I, you know, being in a position where we have a podcast now and I'm still nervous about things. I'm still nervous about feeling out of place or like I don't belong somewhere. And seeing what you've accomplished in your fitness journey is like, I know I've reached out to you a few to like, what do I do? And what about Zumba? So I feel like you've given me a lot more confidence about just sort of putting myself out there because there's no perfect person who suddenly just shows up at a class already knowing what to do. And I think it's so important for our listeners to know that at any age, at any stage, that you're capable of change and it's within you. And you're just such a perfect example of that. So I'm just really appreciative of uh, all of your insights. Oh, thank you. And yes, I absolutely believe I think that was the biggest key for me was learning. It was all in my control and I had the power to change any of it. Once I figured that out, 
my entire life changed. But for years, I just thought, I don't know whose control I thought it was in. I just thought that's what it was. I didn't know that I could do better or do more. Well, I, th- I think we like feel like we don't deserve to take up space. Like everybody else yes. is more important or everybody else's needs or, you know, I know I did that for years. And my, like I even, I'm going to call out my dad. My dad told me when I was 18 or 19, if you're not fit by 23, whatever fitness level you are, then you're, there's no place to go from there. And those messages that we get yeah. growing wow. up about our, our self-worth, you know, and I'm like, what did my dad know? He didn't know anything. He was just a dude, <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Lovely guy. I love my dad, but letting go of those messages and those like, oh yeah, well watch me. I can do it. Like that mindset stuff has just been so important. And I know I have been very grateful to be, have been on this journey with you for years and being able to watch your transformation and your challenges and your successes, you know, through life's up and downs. So, uh, so we just really appreciate your, your perspective and that, uh, knowing that change is possible at any age. Yes. So there well, we go. Thank you so much. I just wanted to uh, ask you, uh, because it's a, uh, topic near and dear to me. Um, you know, the thing that really kickstarted me into losing my uh, hundred pounds was getting a type two diabetes diagnosis. And I know you mentioned on your uh, half size me interview that you uh, had been diagnosed and had gotten down, uh, had gotten your A1C down to uh, basically normal. And I just, uh, your interview was a few years ago. I just wondered if you uh, could uh, give us a little update on how that's going. Yes. Yeah, so I'm still, Um, as far as my doctor's concerned, she still considers that I have reversed my type two diabetes. Um, I'm still at good numbers when I go and see her. And, um, even through that, I went off of my medication, I think about six months after I started this journey and I've gotten pregnant and had a healthy pregnancy and had a healthy baby and still doing very well with that. So, and I think that's fantastic. I think being active plays a huge part in that. Yeah, I agree. Just, you know, the way the body works, we need to be active. Whatever it is, find something that you love to do. But our bodies were meant to move and it's healthier for everything when we move. And if you can find something you love, that's the key because then you're going to keep doing it. That's fantastic. That's advice. great. And thank you so much. Um, and uh, we really appreciate everything uh, that you've uh, that you've said. Hopefully this will uh, get, you know, certain people, perhaps even Catherine Weigel, <laughs> Yeah. Why well, you got to uh, at me, bro? <laughs> to venture outside of their comfort zones. And, you know, it's so funny. I, I am like, I, I don't have any intention of uh, doing a class, but yet I'm <laughs> nagging her to do it. But I'm really hoping that it will, uh, it will get some people, you know, who might, because there are people who just, you know, they, they hate the idea of even walking for fitness, but, you know, doing something like you did trying, you know, like in around the world, all those different classes, getting out of your comfort zone. Um, you may find something that you love that you didn't realize that you love. And I I think that that is is the key, as we've said before, to continuing to do it is that you don't, at least that you don't hate it (laughs) when you're doing it. (laughs) Zumba, don't hate it. There we go. Um, (laughs) Exactly. If if our listeners, our fine listeners, good-looking listeners, uh, wonderful listeners wanted to find you uh, on the internet, uh, do you have an Instagram or anything that they they can follow? I do have an Instagram. I am Steffi, S-T-E-P-H-I-E-N-S-C on Instagram. And I'm also on Facebook as Zin, Z-I-N, Stephanie Robinson. That's my Zumba instructor page. If anybody Uh would like to find me there and like that page, you can follow along with with my Zumba career. (laughs) And and I'll link to both of those uh, in the show notes. I didn't know that you had that. Interesting. I guess I haven't been... uh trolling you enough to know about your, <laughs> <Lady>. <laughs> your Facebook. Yeah, your Facebook stalking game is, uh, is Man, weak. I'm too busy on Instagram looking at all the fun she's having. So. <laughs> exactly. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And uh, I think you uh, are just a perfect example of finding uh, fitness and joy in the process. So, uh, So thank you for your time. Thank you so much. 
So that was our interview with Zumba instructor Stephanie. I know that I am now inspired to get out there and get more active. I know. I'm feeling a little bit more competition in the inspiration uh, category. <laughs> but uh, when, once we actually completed recording, uh, I realized that I, too, am an obliger. I need external accountability. And uh, I have made a commitment in front of as many as one person, including yeah. Donald and eh, Stephanie also, yeah. uh, that by the time this air episode airs, I will have taken a Zumba class. Ah. So we'll see if that actually happens. So by we the have... time you're listening to this, uh, Catherine will have taken a Zumba class. Yeah, so I've got, uh, this will come out in four weeks from when we're recording it. So in the next four weeks, I've got to put my money where my Zumba is yes. and, uh, and get out there. I've got the shoes. And now, uh, thanks to Stephanie, I have the inspiration to get it done. So, And uh, maybe you'll be saying, all I want to do is Zumba, Zumba, zoom, 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 zoom in the... No, 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 never mind. <laughs> uh, one thing that for, uh, Stephanie forgot... In the forgot, church basement, or the, perhaps the multi-purpose room at our local rec center. <laughs> <laughs> Those are two excellent places to do Zumba. Uh, one thing that Stephanie forgot to mention that she wanted us to bring up is if you're looking for local Zumba classes in your area, uh, you can go to Zumba.com and... And uh, type in your zip code, et cetera, and uh, find instructors in your area um, and uh, give it a shot. Yeah, that's Zumba with a Z, not Roomba with an R, because yes. then you'll just get high power vacuuming inspiration. <laughs> so go to Zumba, not Roomba. Don't blame us if you go to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. If you've uh, enjoyed this interview and our shenanigans, um, you can find out more about us by going to weonlylookthin.com, where uh, you can click on Join Our Support Group and find out more information about, guess what? Joining our support group. Well, place, W-O-L-T, place. Yes, indeed. Uh, it is a support group for women, and uh, if you are looking for some outer accountability, uh, it can be a great place. It is a great place place uh, to get that and uh, to help you on your journey. Yep. And you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at We Only Look Thin. You can email us at weonlylookthin at gmail.com. And we do respond and uh, and answer questions. And if you would like to do something to help us out, we would really appreciate if you would uh, go to um, Apple Podcasts and uh, rate the show. And even better would be to rate it and review it. Um, if you have a couple of minutes, it can just be a few short words. Um, we really enjoy and appreciate all of your um, feedback and your. Uh, it really helps people to find the show. When the more ratings and reviews we have, uh, the more likely it is to come up in search engines when um, people search for you know health and fitness and weight loss podcasts. Yeah, and uh, if you give us a couple stars, maybe five stars, that would be super. We're actually. I'm not going to tell you what my favorite number is, but my favorite number is very close to the number of current reviews that we have. Ah. I'd love to get to that number. So you don't know how many it is. You don't know what it is. <laughs> but, uh, but why don't you help me get there? It'd exactly. Be fun. And we would we would really appreciate it. So if you're still trying to figure out what the difference between a Roomba and a Zumba is, <laughs> just remember <laughs> that Catherine and I are an, an inspiration. Asian, 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 Asian. And so is Stephanie. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program.